8.6. Solving logarithmic equations. Example 1. You're to solve the following logarithmic statement. To do this, we need to look at maybe different logarithmic laws. Sometimes we need to convert it to a different form. It all depends on what the question is asking. In this case, you notice that we have all the same log bases. So, Let's look at this side, which is making our side, this side, complicated. If you look at it, it is a difference of two logs. A difference of two logs, we know of this with the same base, is part, we know that this is part of the log laws. A difference of two logs represents a, the quotient law of logarithms, which says that if I have the difference of two logs with the same base, you can have the same base log with 20x over 5. So it is the quotient law that we're using to solve this. And what we get is now we have a logarithmic equation where both sides have a single log on both sides. Because they're the single log with the same base, we can drop the log, same log base and the arguments. So what I'm saying here is the logs are equal, the bases are equal, Therefore, their arguments are equal. So 20x over 5 is equal to 4x, is, and that is equal to 12. So log 3 of 12 is, all we're doing is making the arguments equal. So 4x is equal to 12, that means x is equal to 3. So this is a pretty straightforward and easy question to solve. Let's look at another one. This one we approached in many different ways. There are many different ways to solve this particular problem. We're going to approach it in different ways so you can see the different multiple ways that an answer can be solved and always will lead you to the exact same answer. So we need to make sure that you check your final answers to verify that they actually will fit in here and none of the exclusions come in f into place. For example, in here you could not have a number that is less than negative 3 over 2 because this log would not exist. In this case, the number cannot be less than 2. It has to be, two, uh, has to be actually greater than 2. Well, that means that if this has to be greater than 2, then all of the numbers in here have to be greater than 2 because the whole thing would not be equal. Remember that if one part is, in, uh, one part is invalid, the whole thing is invalid. All right. So again, be sure to check for admissible answers. And remember that the argument and the log base must both be positive. So what are we looking at here? Well, we see that we have the same log base and the product law in, is in effect. So log base 3 of this function is equal to 6. This is a logarithmic equation where one side has a log, the other side doesn't. So we could actually convert this to an exponential equation. Log b a base of 3 to the power of 6 is equal to the argument. And this is what we have here. We can expand on this and collect like terms. And as a result, we could try to factor this. But to be honest, folks, when it gets this big, let's just use the quadratic formula. Turns out when I use the quadratic formula, we will have two decimal answers. So it wasn't really nicely factorable anyways. And here are two decimal answers. One of these is invalid. Let's see why. If I plug in 19 into this equation, 2 times 19 plus 3, it works. Remember that when we looked at this originally, I said that the number had to be bigger than 2. Well, this number, unfortunately, is not bigger than 2. So... Negative 18 times 9, uh, this, sorry, x equals negative 18 answer is not valid. It would be inadmissible. All right, so we can cross it off, and we say that it is inadmissible because it will not work in the original question. All right, that's the end of the video, folks. Have a great day.